Hi everybody, my name is Samer Audi. This is video number nine in the Kali Linux security tools series. Our topic for today is SSL analysis, and it's really difficult to make sense of this demo unless you have basic understanding of cryptography. So let me go over the basics. First of all, one way to classify encryption system is by the number of keys. First, we have the symmetric encryption systems which are based on a single key that is used to both encrypt and decrypt a private message. Asymmetric encryption, on the other hand, uses two different but related keys. Either one of the keys can encrypt or decrypt the message. For example, if key A encrypts the message, then only key B can decrypt it and vice versa. This system is also called the public key encryption system because one of the keys is public and the other, of course, is private. Public key cryptography solves two problems that are inherent in the symmetric key system. Number one is the key distribution problem. Let's say I publish my public key on a website and make it available for everybody. If a message is encrypted with the public key, it can only be opened with my private key. So if somebody wants to send me a message, they can use the public key available on the website and voila, the problem solved. No need to share my private key in this scenario. The second problem is the integrity of the message or the digital signature, as you will see. Again, only I have access to my private key. If I use it to encrypt a message, but not with private data that I want to protect, but rather with my identity, with my digital signature. Since my public key is available for everyone on my website, they can use it to decrypt the message and verify that I sent it. However, although we solve two problems, we didn't solve everything. Anyone can still claim they are whoever they want to claim they are. A hacker, for instance, can create a website and make it look like your bank and claim that this is your bank's website. When you decrypt their message with their public key, you can simply see their claim, right? But you cannot verify who they really are. So the solution to this problem is to use a trusted authority. This authority called the certificate authority would certify the identities and create electronic documents indicating that organizations or individuals are who they say they are. The electronic documents in this case would be the digital certificates. So let's say you are accessing a website, right? And you can see that icon, it can be the lock icon or the green color in your web browser stating that there is a digital certificate and it's valid. Your web browser would actually recognize the trusted certificate authority and using its public key, it would verify the validity of the certificate. If it cannot do that or the certificate has expired, for instance, you would see a warning from your web browser. So using the public key of the website, you as a user in your web browser, you can encrypt your confidential data, say your username and password when you log in, and in this case, and send it to the server. In this case, if anybody got your data, it's encrypted and only the server with the private key can decrypt it. While all of this is great, we still have one issue. What about when the server wants to send you confidential data? What key will it use in this case? If it uses the private key, for instance, then anyone can decrypt it. Remember, encrypting with the private key is only for signing. It's not for protecting the confidentiality of the data. So this is where SSL and its new, more secure cousin, TLS, come into the picture. SSL 
is the secure socket layer. TLS is the transport layer security. Although SSL is deprecated and has many security issues, we still use SSL to refer to TLS. So it's very common to say SSL, like in today's demo, SSL analysis, and sometimes you will see SSL slash TLS and so on. So simply put and moving on with the web example in mind, SSL slash TLS provide a mechanism for establishing some sort of a secret key symmetric in this case, you will see how, between the client and the server. The server would tell the client what versions of the protocol it has, what cyber suites it uses, and the client does exactly the same. Using the public key, the client in this case would create a pre-master key, send it to the server, the server has the private key to decrypt it, and at this point, with the pre-master key, both the client and the server would generate, would compute the final secret key. And from now on, they would have a secure encrypted communication using a shared symmetric key. Okay, so this has been an oversimplified crash course in cryptography. And with it out of the way, I can finally talk about our SSL analysis tools. So let's start. Okay, so today we have four tools under SSL analysis. Using SSL scan and SSLIs, we can perform SSL recon on our target. But what does that really mean? Let's say our target is a website. It's a secure website with digital certificate. What can we discover using these tools? We can find out what versions of the SSL TLS protocols it supports. We can discover what cipher suite it has. We can discover if the server is vulnerable to attacks related to older versions of SSL TLS. So for example, the heart bleed attack and so on. While one of these scanners, so these two will be our scanners. While one of them is running, I'm going to run a packet analyzer, the SSL dump. So SSL dump will capture the SSL traffic. And this is for us to analyze later. So this is the plan for these three tools. SSL H is a little different. So I will leave it to the end of the demo. Let's get to know our tools. We will start with SSL scan. As you can see, it's a fast scanner and we will ignore the options for now. All we need is a target and our target will be altoromutual.com. Our tool was able to scan our target and among other things, it discovered what versions of the protocols are enabled. As you can see, SSL version two and version three are disabled in this case. And it checked for other SSL related features like compression, renegotiation. It checked also what ciphers the server supports. Remember in TLS handshake, both the client and the server present what ciphers they have and they agree on one that they will use to create the final secret or shared secret. Also notice here that it checked whether or not the server is vulnerable to the heart bleed attack. As you can see, there are no man pages for SSLIs. We will simply specify the targets. We will not use any options. However, before I run it, I'm going to go ahead and start my SSL dump to see the traffic that is being captured and generated when the scanner scans my target. It dumps SSL traffic on the interface of our choice. 
There it is. The D option will display the application data traffic. And that's what our scanner will be doing. It will be talking to the server and we want to capture that traffic. Let's start. Just to show you the name of the interface that I will be using, F0. Okay, SSL dump is up and running. So before we go to SSLIs, let's see what SSL dump was able to capture. This is the start of my connection from my Kali to Altoro Mutual on port 443, which is the HTTPS port. And as you can see, this is the TLS handshake from client to server. The first message is the client hello. You will see the cipher suites. Let's see what SSLIs got for us. It's more details than SSL scan. It's showing us that it checked the different versions and for each version of the SSL TLS protocol, what ciphers are supported by the server. On TLS 1.0, it attempted to connect using 80 cipher suites. SSL 2.0, seven cipher suites were all rejected, meaning this version of the protocol is not supported or not enabled. Here, the tool checked for more vulnerabilities. The heart bleed is one of them, but also CCS injection and the downgrade attacks vulnerabilities. The first two, it said, no, it's not vulnerable, but take a look here. Our target our server is vulnerable to downgrade attacks okay so on with our last tool for today which is sslh this tool is a protocol demultiplexer what does that mean simply put sslh allows us to accept multiple connections on the same port. So let's say you are within an environment, an organization, a network where there's a firewall or intrusion detection prevention system that are blocking certain ports like the SSH port, port 22. And you want to be able to connect to uh, an SSH uh, service. So what you can do in this case is to tell SSLH to use or forward. It becomes like a switchboard that traffic to another port that is usually allowed web port, the secure web port, which is HTTPS port 443. Let's see how this works. You can use the tool as it is, or you can use it as a service running service, which makes more sense. And this is what I will do. So the first thing we will do is to edit the SSLH configuration file here and we will say run equal to yes, and we will change this. This is the unroutable address, which defaults to 443 in this case. SSH is one, uh, 22, sorry, on the loopback address. SSL is 443 and so on. I think we're ready, we just need to save. Next, I'm gonna run my SSH service, which is by default on port 22, and I'm gonna test it before I run my demultiplexer. Let me check the status first. As you can see, it's inactive.
Now it's running. Let me connect to it. Okay, it's connecting. I'm just entering the wrong password. Let me just show you if I do it on port 443. As you can see, the connection is refused. So this is now the scenario where it's working on the default port 22. However, let's say this port is blocked. So the solution is to use my SSLH tool. So it's also inactive, repeat. It is running and I will simply repeat this command to try to connect to the SSH service on a port that wouldn't be blocked, which is port 443. Again, this time it works and it's asking me for the password. Okay, this is it for this demo. If you enjoyed it, you know what to do. Thank you for watching.